So we introduced this idea of gases and the quantities associated with gases and the interrelationship between those quantities associated with gases. And one of those interrelationships was Charles Law, which basically says that the volume is proportional to temperature for a given gas. And we can codify that even more by saying V1T1 is equal to V2T2. Now, we can look at this particular problem. Um, a gas at STP has a volume of 350 mils. What is the expected volume at 100 degrees C? And we can use those little tips that I, I offered for how to look them. List, look at these problems, and we start listing out information. STP is shorthand notation for standard temperature and pressure, which means one atmosphere zero degrees centigrade. And so we want to know what the temperature is upon going from zero degrees centigrade to a final temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. So here's an initial set of conditions. And here's a final set of conditions where something has changed. Very typical gas law problem. What other information do we have? We have the volume. The volume initially was 315 milliliters. Now, be cautious when dealing with gas laws and solutions. Make sure that you're reporting volume of gas, not volume of associated solution. Two very different bits of information. And what we care about is some unknown final volume. So temperature and volume, temperature and volume, that's Charles' law. And so we can plug this useful information into this equation and spit out an answer. Unfortunately, we have to take into account that this temperature units are in the correct representation because Charles' law volume temperature relationship relies on the fact that the temperature has to be on the absolute scale which allows us to convert each of these numbers to their respective correct values so that our initial value was 273.15 Kelvin and our final value was 373.15 Kelvin. Once we have those we can plug those in and so plugging that in, we can say that for every 315 milliliter, 315 milliliters divided by our temperature of 273.15 Kelvin, that will equal some unknown volume also in milliliters because the units have to cancel correctly. 373.15 Kelvin, our final temperature. So multiplying both sides by 373.15, 373.15, we get the following. Kelvin's cancel, leaving us with our final V2 equal to 430 milliliters. Now, as with most gas law problems, we check to see if this makes sense. We've increased, the temperature has gone up, the volume has gone up. Very useful. So, typical gas law problem. List out the information you have. Start seeing if there's a change, whichever change, if there is a change, this is associated with the particular law. So that's Charles' law. Now, as it turns out, Charles had some brothers. One of the first actual gas law measurements was in the 17th century, and that was by Robert Boyle. And 
he recognized the relationship between pressure and volume. Uh, as we probably are aware that as you increase the pressure on a gas, its volume decreases. And it turns out that this pressure volume relationship is actually inversely proportional. And so we can write the pressure times the volume is equal to a constant. And just like with a Charles law, what that means is that at some given pressure and volume, that will equal the pressure and volume of a different under a different set of conditions. So the product of the pressure and the volume is a constant. So too is the product of the pressure and volume of the same, same gas under a different set of conditions. Take home message means is that if you add pressure, if you increase the pressure, the volume goes down. You increase the volume, the pressure, the pressure goes down. Right. So this relationship allows us to relate pressure and volume. Let's take a quick look at an example. You got a two liter sample at 1.5 answer at 1.5 atmospheres. If you suddenly reduce the pressure, sorry, suddenly reduce the volume to 0.36 liters, what would be the pressure in atmospheres and in tor? Well, Again, we start listing out our quantities. The initial pressure is shown as 1.5 atmospheres. The initial volume was 2.00 liters. And the final pressure is what we're looking for. And our volume is given as 0 0.36 liters. You compress the gas, we would expect the pressure to go up. So plugging these values in, 1.5, we get the following expression. A little creative rearrangement. some judicious multiplication says that we would expect the final app final pressure to be eight point three three atmospheres so by drastically reducing the volume from two liters to 0.35 liters you would increase the pressure to 8.3 atmospheres Pressure goes down, volume goes up. Volume goes up, volume goes down, pressure goes up. Now, this question also asks us about tor. Well, from our definition, we know that one ATM is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, or tor. And so, in this case, it's quite trivial to just multiply. It says that there are 6,330 or 6,300 in sig figs, tor. So the pressure would at, after this would be 6,300 tor. So pressure volume relationship. That's Boyle's law. It's one of the more common ones. You can combine Charles' law and Boyle's law get the following guy Lussac's law guy Lussac's law basically it recognizes the relationship between pressure and temperature as the temperature goes up pressure goes up the two are proportional like volume and temperature pressure and temperature also are linear so what that means is that uh, P1 over T1 will equal P2 over T2. As 
pressure and temperature. As the pressure goes up, the temperature goes up. The two are proportional. This is why you don't throw aerosol can cans into a fire. Because you throw the aerosol can into the fire, the pressure inside the can, which was about one atmosphere, you know, at room temperature, as you heat it up, what would be the new pressure inside the can at, oh, we'll just say 400 degrees centigrade. Decent temperature inside the coals of the fire. Now, using this relationship, one atmosphere, 25 degrees centigrade, well, I have to put this into Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, 298.15, 298.15, 298 Kelvin, and 400 shows us that our final pressure would be 2.4 atmospheres. Almost three times what it was originally in the can. Causing the can to rupture, which is usually flammable stuff. And actually, the temperature inside of a fire is actually substantially hotter than 400 degrees C. But usually by then, the can is ruptured and, and you end up in the hospital or on YouTube somewhere. So pressure temperature relationships are also quite reasonable in this sense. As the pressure goes up, the temperature goes up. As the temperature goes up, the pressure goes up. 